Hey everybody, Kyle coming at you for another video out here on this dreary day. And I just got finished changing the turbo on this 2004 Volkswagen Jetta. It's a 1.8 car with a Tiptronic automatic transmission. And while I was doing that, I kind of just uh, realized that maybe some of you would like to know how to even know if you need to change your turbo. So that's today's video. The first thing we gotta talk about before we can really get too deep into this is what are the symptoms of having a bad turbocharger? Because you don't wanna go tearing into your car and taking off the turbocharger until you have a pretty good idea. In my experience, and this can vary depending on what kind of vehicle that we're talking about, but for the most part, this includes gas and diesel engines. Usually, if you got a bad turbocharger, you're gonna see one or two or maybe all of these symptoms so you know if you have a way to know how much uh pressure you know you're getting into the intake from your turbocharger it's pretty obvious if you're not making the boost you need to make um if your car is completely stock like mine it doesn't have any type of uh, boost gauge on it then it might not be so obvious you know but you can kind of just pay attention for a couple things. You won't hear the turbocharger. Usually you can hear the turbocharger spool up as it revs, um, and, or you'll just feel a real lack of power in the car. But you know, you could lose boost and still have a good turbocharger. You know, you could have a boost leak somewhere, meaning one of the hoses or pipes is disconnected. Another good indication is consumption of oil. Um, if your engine is consuming oil and you're putting quarts of oil in it every day, it's a pretty good chance if it's turbocharged that it's burning through the turbocharger where it doesn't necessarily mean you have a bad turbocharger. You could have bad uh, piston rings or what have you, or it could be a leak somewhere, but that is another indication. You're hearing a chattering in the turbocharger. Um, this doesn't always happen when you have a bad turbocharger, but I have definitely seen bad turbochargers that literally while they're running, you can hear the, the turbo chattering, like it's rattling almost. Um, if you know for a fact that that noise is coming from your turbo, um, which you can use like a mechanic stethoscope to really tell, um, then you definitely have a bad turbo, which was actually the major symptom on this Jetta is it'll smoke and i don't mean smoke a little bit usually when a turbocharger goes bad when it's really bad it'll smoke like a freight train and i'll try to include a clip of this car smoking and when it was cold and when it got hot it just got so much worse it got so bad that you couldn't you know you couldn't even start the car up for more than a couple seconds without somebody calling the fire department if your car just smokes a little bit, it could be the turbo, but it could also be, once again, the piston rings. Um, so that is not necessarily a defining uh, symptom. But if you have a couple of these symptoms and they're not, you know, defining, you know, they're not defined definitely as a turbocharger issue, but you have like two of these, like one, you're not making any boost and your car smoking, or you're not making any boost and consuming oil. It's a good, it's a good indication. If you're just smoking a little bit and... Eh, I would, I would try to do a little bit more investigation before I go tearing the turbo off it completely. But yeah, that's at least the baseline so you know that you have a problem. I've got a couple turbos over here. We'll come over here and look at them. So the best way that I can really explain to you guys how to tell if your turbocharger is bad is to show you both a good and a bad turbocharger. Obviously, as you can see, these are not both the exact same model turbocharger, but the concepts are the same. When we look at this turbocharger, which I took off already, this is the one off the Jetta that was bad. The first thing that you can do is try to take some of the intake piping off and look for oil in through the intake. Um, so it really depends on what kind of car you have and how your turbo is positioned, if this will even be really feasible. If you have like a rear wheel drive car or like an Audi or something where the turbo is just on the side and it's pretty accessible, uh, this would be something I would not hesitate to do. I would just go ahead and, and pull off. Um, there's actually like an aluminum neck that goes here on the end of the turbo and there's a little bolt 
that holds that on. Just take that bolt off and pull this off. If you have a Borg Warner K03 uh, like this, that's on that Volkswagen or an Audi. Um, or if you have like another model of turbocharger, uh, just take and get to this part where the front of the turbine is. Or the compressor wheel, I'm sorry. Um, so you take that off and as you can see with this turbocharger, it's literally pouring oil out of the front of it. So if you take that off and you see this, then hands down you need a turbocharger, it's leaking oil. So another thing that you gotta look for is shaft play. And I think some people seem to think that they're looking for it in and out, which yeah, you know, you wanna look for it in and out, but that's not usually how they go really bad. It's actually the up and down motion. See how far this is moving? This is moving like a whole quarter inch. And it's really loose, like, I'll try to get in here for you. See how loose this is? This is definitely a bad turbocharger. There's no doubt in, in my mind about that. Um, so we'll come over here. So what we were just looking at is called a uh, KO3. It's made by Borg Warner. Um, they're commonly found on European cars that are turbocharged. Um, what I have here is a Garrett VT365. This is a variable geometry turbo. They're used I think only on Ford six liter power stroke diesels. Um, but I like to, I like using this one for, for the, for this purpose because it's a lot bigger and I can show you a lot more clearly everything that's going on here. So this is what I would consider a good turbo. Um, so what I look for is oil in the front of the compressor, which there's none. Um, and I look for shaft play. So Every turbo, even brand new from the factory, has just a little, little tiny bit of up and down motion. And even this one, it's so tiny, you can't even get it on camera though. But you can feel like just a hair. But that's, that's considered within spec. Because um, these things are not a perfect science. But like this, come back to this uh, KO3. This rattling all over the place, moving all this way, that's not within spec. Um, so this is so... But what we have here is good. We don't see any oil leaking. Um, mind you, I've had this one stored for a while. Um, you know, I had this from a job that I did for somebody and they just said I could keep the turbos, so I did. <laughs> I don't know what I'll ever use it on. Maybe sell it to somebody that needs it. Um, but yeah, moving on. So, for some of you, this is probably obvious, but if you're not a mechanic or you haven't worked on a lot of turbocharged vehicles, these turbos, they uh, they use oil to lubricate them. Um, they have like a, just like a regular bearing, just like you would have in the bottom of your motor. And the bearing is lubricated by oil, like it has a film of oil in the bearing. And it's always cycling oil through the turbo to help cool it. So this turbo, as a matter of fact, has both oil and it's cooled by the engine coolant. Um, whereas this Garrett model, for whatever reason, just as only uh, lubricated and cooled by oil. But what can happen here is if the bearing goes bad in this, and there's also some uh, O-ring seals in this or something like that, uh, it'll leak oil from this metal, from this middle part that holds the shaft of the compressor and turbine wheels into the actual both sides of the turbo, which is what happened with this. So it was putting oil into the intake of the motor and it was also putting oil straight into the exhaust, which was making it smoke incredibly bad. And it was consuming a lot, a lot of oil. Let's say you've done what, uh, done everything you can to diagnose it and you're pretty sure it's turbo. Um, what do you do now? Well, you have a couple options. You could rebuild what you got if it's in good enough shape. Um, you can get rebuild kits ranging between 20 bucks to 100 bucks, depending on where you get it. Um, and if you're confident enough to rebuild it, there's plenty of information on the internet. I don't doubt that most people could rebuild a turbo if they took their time, they did their research. Or, um, you know, if your turbo is in really bad shape and you don't dare rebuild it, which was kind of my situation, you can just replace it. So, the parts involved to replace a turbo was pretty much just the turbocharger unit. Um, and maybe some incidental stuff like, you know, a little bit of penetrating oil. Um, 
So the price on most turbos really depends on the application. So if we look back at the uh, Garrett turbo, that VT365 variable geometry turbo that I have, if you had to replace that, I really don't think you could get one for less than $600 even used. Um, depends on where you go and what you have available in your area. Maybe you can get one for like 400 bucks, but it'd still be a used turbo. So, you know, you'd still be on kind of a time thing, you know, depends on how much use the truck it was on had. Um, the KO3 turbo use, I bought my KO3 that I put on this Jetta for 200 bucks used from a junkyard. And I probably got a better deal than average on that. Um, at least to buy it in person. I did see some on eBay that were about 200 bucks used. And uh, so I, I'd say anybody can get one for between 200 and 300 dollars if we're just talking about a Jetta, like a little K03 or TD04. Or, it just totally depends on your application. Pretty much you can get almost every turbocharger clone like every majorly used turbocharger is a clone, like a Chinese clone aftermarket. And they are very competitively priced. Uh, I saw some KO3s and KO4 turbos going for between 150 and $250 brand new. Um, but my thing about it is, is these Chinese turbos have a really bad reputation and they can, and if they go bad, they can cause more damage than they're worth. Um, so you'd have to definitely do your research on that and try to find one that's from a reputable source with good reviews if you can. Um, and in, if you're not confident, you know, if even a used turbo, like an OEM used turbo is not going to go as bad as a brand new Chinese turbo can go, it, but it totally depends on your situation and, and your experience and everything. So as far as that goes, then you've got the labor of replacing it. And this really depends on your vehicle. Um, if we're talking about something rear wheel drive, doing the turbos on those aren't nearly as bad as doing them on like a front wheel drive car, like a Volvo or a Volkswagen or something like that. Um, because these transverse mounted motors, the exhaust comes out the back and you've got to pretty much do all of this work in the back of the motor, underneath the car, sticking your hand up between the subframe and the firewall, and you do some of the work from the top, sticking your hand between the valve cover and the firewall and trying to get to all these bolts that you can't even see. It, it's a real task um, to do these turbos on these front wheel drive cars like that. My main thing is, 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 is it's all about you. Whatever you're comfortable doing, whatever you're confident doing, um, you know, just look at the job, look at some videos of other people doing it and get an idea for it. It's definitely not a small job. Um, it books, at least on this Jetta, the shop book time on it is 4.5 hours. If anybody was wondering what they will have to pay, four and a half hours labor on removal and replacement. Um, so, you know, you figure if a shop's charging you $100 an hour, it's gonna be $450 just for the labor. And you put in another $200 for the turbo in this Jetta situation. So you'd be $650 deep into this job uh, to pay somebody else to do it. So for me, I really did consider paying a shop to do it because I don't, I don't have a garage or anything. I had to do this in my yard, but I just couldn't justify it on a job like this. I, I've done it before. I know what it takes. So even though I wanted to be lazy about it and just shell out the money and let somebody else do it. I mean, I got it done just as fast. I probably get the car back faster, but I'm also pretty confident and experienced in what I'm doing. If I was just some guy that had only ever changed my brake pads, I might not do that, you know? So it's all about you. Um, but I always support people at least trying their best. As long as you do everything right, you do your best to do it right. That's all that matters. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and I'm gonna try and get more videos like this out to you as much as I can.